I'm not just a pastor on the stage that's saying, you shouldn't do this. I mean, I have a pentagram in my hand. I'm not coming from the Christian place telling you not to go to Satanism. I'm coming from Satanism telling you to go to Christ. Good morning. My name is Brett, and I want to tell you why I'm a Christian. This video is not necessarily for believers. This is for people that are lost as I was, which unfortunately is a large percentage of the population today. Um, so a brief background about myself, I'm from Ohio, I've lived in Ohio my whole life. I am 39 years old. I am a father of a beautiful 18 year old girl, Haley, and I am married. Uh, we're moving on two years to my wife, Kimberly, and we've been together for seven years. Um, I never, I never thought that I would be making a video to profess my Christianity or try to help others see things the way that I have seen them. Um, I live just fine in a secular world. I, I, I had no, I thought that I had no need for religion. I thought that the Bible was wrong. I thought that Jesus did not even exist. Um, I was very, very wrong. I was wrong. Uh, my path to Christianity wasn't one that is conventional. I did not have any Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking at my door. I wasn't brainwashed by a cult. I came to Christ when I was 39 years old. Very recently, actually. The realization of the validity of Christianity and the truth of Jesus as a Savior is what is compelling me to make this video right now. It was not a thing of willingness. Uh, it was not a thing that I got into a new group of friends that I thought, well, this is making them happy. I want to be happy. This isn't something that is heavily promoted in my circles. I am a tattoo artist. When I was a kid, my, uh, my mom raised us uh, somewhat within the Christian church. I did do Sunday school when I was a young, young child. Uh, yeah, I went to church until we were probably 10 or 11, I wouldn't say every weekend. Uh, and then at 12, I made the decision to get baptized on my own. Uh, it wasn't an honest acceptance of Christ. It was more of a plea bargain, a bartering deal. I was very sick one night. I was familiar with salvation. Uh, didn't comprehend what it truly meant. I was only 12 years old. I only had such a worldview at this time. But I gave my Christ or life to Christ in order to feel better. I wouldn't say it was the most honorable thing. After that, I wrote a contract uh, physically down on paper to Christ and God saying, I will give my life to you. I shared it with my mom the next day. She was ecstatic, and she had the uh, pastor come out. First Baptist Church of Pickerington, Chris Reber, came out and spoke to me, asked me the questions that he needed to ask, and uh, I answered in the right way and, and um, was baptized. I did not live a Christian life from that moment since. Around 13, I started getting into nasty stuff. Uh, I smoked weed for the first time at 13. I had sex for the first time at 13. I dropped acid for the first time at 13. I became a huge fan. I had already been a fan, but I became really uh, enthralled with um, heavy metal, horror movies. Anything that was dark kind of drew me right towards it. I fell deep into sin. Uh, I started wearing metal shirts being an outcast from society. Heavy metal was not popular at all. Uh, it was a skater, skateboarding was not popular at all. I was kind of an outcast and I very much enjoyed it. I'm not quite certain why. Um, but that was the path that I chose. Uh, I fell in with a young man that came from a troubled hole and he introduced me to the weed, the alcohol, uh, hooked me up with his best friend, a young lady that we had sex at 
just wait to be 4 age. I barely knew her. Uh, and uh, that was the way of my life for 27 years. And I really got into the life of the party atmosphere. I started drinking heavily. I had never stopped really smoking weed from, I don't even know, when I was 13 on. There were little spells where I stopped, but that was a lifelong thing. I had tattoos lasered off to put a Baphomet here. I had the sigil of Lucifer here. I have Crowley here. My whole uh, uh, ribs are a giant black demon ripping out my heart and shoving a pope down into a demon's mouth, a hell mouth. I know when I'm to my back is Medusa from the gates of hell, from Dante's uh, Divine Comedy, from the Inferno. I know what I'm talking about because I'm coming from that place. It was a very nice Les Paul guitar, kind of probably the nicest possession that I had. I took it to Stain Skin in Columbus and I said, hey, is anyone willing to trade this guitar for a half sleeve? The intro into tattooing for me was satanic imagery, esoteric imagery, uh, Kabbalah studies, numerology, uh, Hindu and Vedic uh, based imagery uh, and uh, so it began. I was um, an apprentice for about a year and then I tattooed for about a year. Ended up going back to my original mentor after I left Gunner. My pride and ego pushed me out of my really good spot and back into the original mentor's shop. At this time it was called Natas, N-A-T-A-S, Satan backwards. To help promote that kind of idea and really push it forward, my art became all satanic. Just, I mean, it moved from even the doctrines of, uh, you know, universal truths and love and all these things that are provided with esoteric into a very dark place. I did very well with it. Uh, the world definitely paid me well. The devil really liked me on that team. I ended up eventually getting my own shop after that. It was constant turmoil, constant turmoil, but it was numbed by material goods. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars coming, sometimes multiple thousands a day. Living in a $2,500 a month apartment, getting to like buying each other thousand uh, dollar appliances and suits and stuff and each day would buy something and this was just to numb to try and give the illusion of happiness and I kept seeing these videos that said oh masons 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 freemasons freemasons so I started working those symbols into my art not knowing what I was putting in there so as I worked these masonic symbols into my work I was approached by a freemason and he said, I think you would make a good mason. I said, how do I become one? And that's how you become one. And it was shortly after that I was in a lodge walking around. Uh, I'm not going to delve too deeply into the rituals because there's quite a uh, once you get into them, you know not to talk about it. But I can talk about having this sigil of Lucifer on my face as I was uh, in view of the older Masons and the, the authority of Masons and they were okay with it. Um, I went up a few degrees and then kind of even fell out of that. As much as I had interest and potential in things, I never realized my full potential in anything as in letting it come to fruition. Uh, so that was just another chapter in the life, uh, chapter of, you know, at this point we have drugs, sex, uh, rock and roll, and now we're moving into esoteric and Illuminati existence. Uh, if you believe any of the conspiracy theories, if you can look at the streets of Washington, D.C., if you look at your money, you'll know that Freemasons do indeed run the world. So... Here I am in the midst of all the power, and I start thinking, wow, there's something to this, there's something to this. And I go from an atheist scientist, scientism believer, uh, who with college success in that field, to starting to look at supernatural ideas because of the rituals that I had started to partake in. Started to really research the... the uh, 
foundation of Lucifer and the occult, and uh, it's also hand in hand with esotericism and the theosophy. It all goes back to Babylon mystery religions. The symbolism has an effect, and the rituals have an effect, and that's really what I desired. I thought that this would bring me happiness and completion. I thought that being uh, rampant with sexuality and drug abuse and alcohol abuse would bring me happiness. It done, and looking back, I'm 39 years old now. I'm halfway through my journey, and I can tell you that I've wasted at least 27 years of my life. I'm telling you this out of love, not judgment. I'm telling you this because I want you to see the way that this is. Every drug that I took numbed me to reality. Every alcohol erased it. All the sex in the world doesn't fill the hole. It's like these things have weight to them, and you're trying to throw them in a hole. Throw them in this hole and fill it up. My weed and acid days... See, even with acid, I ended up in the, the uh, ER with a girlfriend that I gave her the acid. She had a bad trip, thought she couldn't breathe, ended up in the ER. Uh, weed, I ended up getting arrested and uh, put on probation uh, to uh, uh, where I could only have driving and child pickup, or work and child privileges for driving. Uh, nothing stopped me. Nothing stopped me. Nothing would ever stop me. I thought. You know, you're young, you're invincible. And again, it's not an excuse, but the world is telling you through music, through culture, through movies, through television shows, through reality TV, that this is the way that you're going to be successful. This is the happiness. You're happy because you're high. You're happy because you're drunk. You're happy because you're going through woman after woman after woman. You're happy because you're living in the total flesh in the world and the now because there is no after. There is no more than the material that you see. Uh, supernatural is, is something that's laughed at and scoffed at most of the time. Uh, spiritual is it's almost not even a consideration. I turn on the TV and there was Jesus. Documentary about Jesus. History Channel. Flip over to Fox News and there's Jesus. Discussion about Jesus. Flip over to MSNBC. Jesus. Grab the magazine. Open it up. There's Jesus. Grab a... I forget which book it was. And again, it was Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, I was a huge fan of pro wrestling. So I saw a post from Dustin Kinzer, one of my friends on Facebook, a complete stranger. And it was the heartbreak kid who happened to be my wife's biggest crush when she was a kid. And I, I thought, well, here's a womanizer party animal that, uh, haha, gotcha, Jesus. Not gonna get me here. So I, uh, Clicked on it and wanted to see. He's got a new movie. Awesome. What's this about? It's his, his wrestling career. And it was his testimony. And I knew that that I was being talked to very personally. Not just in that moment, but my, my whole life. Um, and I realized all the signs that I ignored. And the, uh, the times that I had not only denied Christ, but I specifically made fun of him and mocked him and the blasphemy and the cost of my family and my business from living outside of God's intention. And, uh, And I got on my knees and said, I'm sorry. And I prayed for the first time in a long time to Christ. And uh, I said, I'm sorry. And uh, I realized what I had done. That I was blessed with the mind to really excel in academics, the hands to become a very successful tattoo artist, the business savvy to become a business owner. I was blessed with my wife, 
my daughter, my family. And uh, I asked Christ into my life. And I knew at that very moment that I, uh, I was forgiven right then. That I didn't have to run anymore, that I didn't have to search for happiness in the wrong places, that I didn't have to try to prove myself with how many women I could go through or how many fights I could win or how many drugs I could do and still be standing. I knew that I didn't have to get high all day. I knew that I didn't have to drink to numb any conscious that I might be talking to me. I knew that at that moment, if I was honest with him and said I was sorry, that I was instantly forgiven right then for free. Not just one of my sins, but all of them. All of them. He knew everything that I had done. He knew. And uh, not only did he not leave me, he had chased me. He had chased me so hard with these lessons, you know. It may not be comfortable at times. You may think, well, God has punished me. And uh, it's not. He's, he's trying to show you. He loves you and he, he wants you to make the decision. That's why we have free will, so that we can express love. If we didn't have choices to do the wrong thing or the right thing or mess up or, or be the righteous person, we would be dictated and that's not love. And above everything that God wants for us, he wants love because he loves us. He loves every one of us. And that's why he became Christ to come into our dimension. We live, we live in space and time, God does not. He had to come here to show us how much he loved us. Jesus was sent to teach us and to, to love us and, and give his, the ultimate sacrifice of his life, and he did, so that we could stop one day and one moment. It only takes right now. And I beg you, right now, to stop and say you're sorry. Stop everything that you're doing. It, it can all end right now. You don't have to chase for love in other women's arms if you're married. Or men's arms if you're a woman. You don't have to do drugs. None of that. In my posts on social network, I was very vocal. Usually a lot of angry posts, blasphemous posts. All kinds of satanic music posts, satanic art posts, all this. My Christian friends never left me. They never unfriended me. They were there the whole time. They didn't judge me. They won't judge you. I promise. That's all a lie. That's the enemy talking in your ear, telling you that they'll judge you. Don't go there. Don't go there. He doesn't want you to find happiness. But a friend of mine, Eric Vennon, said, uh, Hey man, he wrote me a, a comment on one of my last posts before finding Christ. And I knew at that point, I kind of knew in my heart where I was being pulled, even though I was still in denial. He said, when you're ready, I'm here. I wrote him and said, hey man, I'm ready. And he said, come to my church. You'll love it. You know, he and I had the same kind of approach to a lot of things. And I thought if it's good for him, you know, probably be good for me. And uh, we went to Faith Life Church. Whew. Sorry. It's harder than I thought it would be. And uh, we walked in. We were smiled at. We were treated more like family than I had been in the 14 years as a tattoo artist and her time with the suicide girls never felt the warmth as we did when we walked in and uh, Pastor Gary started his sermon and uh, within five minutes I turned to Kim and I said I think we're home and we were since that day we haven't missed a single Saturday we've gotten involved we've went through 
the growth track, which is something we can do if you want to, uh, you know, contribute to the church. She's gotten involved in the uh, daycare with the four-year-olds. I'm going to be involved with the 13 to 18 year old ministry and if these people look at me with the things that are on my face and my hands and you know there's this word out of chaos and masonic stuff and pentagrams and all this and they trust me and they can look into my heart look into my soul and see in my eyes that I love Christ they'll see it in you and um, you won't be judged and this isn't just here, this is the Christian family. When people truly understand Christ and want to live like Him and treat others like Him, you won't be judged, you won't be condemned. You'll be prayed for, you'll be welcomed, you'll be loved.